Hello everyone, welcome to Rosebank Farm. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a makeover of my mailbox. It's been many, many years since I've painted it. In fact, my children were all little and I used their handprints on the poles. So it's been many years and it is needed. So we're gonna go take a look at the mailbox and I'll show you what it looks like now and then um, take you through that process of giving my mailbox area a makeover. All right, here's my mailbox. Um, all the stencils that used to be on here have pretty much worn off. You can see right here, that used to be a green leaf, um, but the pink of the rose is completely gone. It's just got some weather. Yeah, all the stencils are gone. Now look at the base. Um, you can start to see a handprint from my kids, but most of the paint is worn off. And I already pulled the Super Tunia bubble gum. Uh, flowers that were around it and getting ready to do some fall mums in here. So here on the front um, The stencil is worn off and the paints all chipped so we'll be taking care of that and over here um, I actually had painted the flag on this pink and it's all faded and worn off so just we are in need of a mailbox makeover but on this side, the paint's not as worn. You can still see the handprints. All right, so let's get started with this project. The goal of the wire brush is to just remove the rust that is showing through um, the spots and, and to get rid of any loose paint. So I'm gonna wire brush it until the rust spots are gone and I can mostly see the shiny metal underneath again. So I'm using um, exterior latex house paint. I just bought this at Walmart. It's uh, semi-gloss for exterior, and it says it'll work on aluminum and wood doors and trim, so should be just fine. So you wanna make sure you paint with the grain of the wood, and you wanna give it time to really soak in. Maybe give it a couple coats so it's on there nice and thick. I'm done painting the mailbox. I even decided to do the inside of the lid. And I've got the post painted all the way down. Got the back side done and the post and the side. The only thing I haven't done yet is the flag. And um, I will do that later when I stencil, but for now, it's painted white, it looks good, and we're gonna let it dry and continue this project um, tomorrow. All right, we'll see you later in the next part of the video, bye. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is another day, I let the paint dry um, overnight, and we are ready to do the flag. Now I'm gonna paint my flag pink because it's my favorite color. So I'm just going to, and this is just an acrylic paint and I will be spraying it with a sealer when I'm done. I have my first coat of pink on and we're gonna let that dry briefly and then I'm gonna put a second coat on and then we'll spray it with the sealer. The next step is to spray um, just the flag with this top coat, durable top coat by Rust-Oleum. And I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard behind the flag just to protect the rest of the mailbox. Baby, this is the fun part. We're gonna decorate the mailbox and plant some flowers. So the first thing I'm going to use is a six foot, six foot faux leaf garland. Um, so I don't mind using a mixture of fake and real items in my decorating. I think the end result will speak for itself. So I'm going to bury one end in the dirt and then the first thing I'm going to do is just wrap this around. Let's 
see. I'm going to tuck it up in here. And I'm just kind of wedging it underneath the mailbox. So let me adjust, adjust this. So for the second six foot strand, I ended up looping it underneath um, the hook on the top because the wind was taking it off the back. And then I just draped both of them down this side and tucked them in up under, wedged them in really good. And that way it doesn't interfere with the flag on this side. Part, we're gonna plant up the mailbox with some plants. This one is an ornamental kale called Emperor Mix. And my goats did uh, trim this up a little bit, but you can still see the deep purple throat in the center. So this is a really pretty cabbage. Still looks halfway decent. So we're gonna plant that in this front corner right here. The next plant I'm gonna be using is um, a chrysanthemum called Jaculin Orange Fusion. And the nice thing about using mums is I can take this and plant it out in the landscape after I'm done and it'll grow back next year. And the way you care for chrysanthemums is you trim them. You use your snips, your felcos, whatever you have, or you can just even break it off and you trim it in this round spherical shape up until the 4th of July. And that'll cause it to create all these blooms. Um, if you don't trim a chrysanthemum, it'll grow real tall and late. So I moved over to the other side of the mailbox. I'm going to repeat that pattern using um, the kale. This one, the goat's got a little bit more. Uh, and then this is called a golden Cheryl mum. And it's not quite all the way blooming, but it's going to be spectacular when it does come in bloom and look so nice. So we're gonna plant those the same as we did um, the first two here at the front of the mailbox. Okay, the last plant I'm going to use is this lantana. It's just about done blooming, but I think it'll hold on to these last few yellow blooms um, to be able to enjoy them for a little bit this fall, but you can see it's already um, setting up the seed heads on it. So we're going to put this in the back and that'll fill in this spot really nicely. So we'll just move some dirt to the side. And then we'll put this lantana back here. And I think I need to go a little deeper. And if I can't go deeper, we'll take some off the bottom of the lantana. There we go. The last two plants that I'm going to put in um, the mailbox are these two geraniums and they're in pretty sorry shape. They've been waiting for a while and my naughty goats got out and ate them. So um, we're going to put them in there. Hopefully they'll perk up a little bit, but I think they're going to add the right touch of color. So we're going to just tuck those in on either side of the lantana. So poor little thing. Look at that. <laughs> But it does have a seat bloom, so it will bloom again. So we'll put that one on that side. And we'll put the other one over here. And we'll give them a chance and see what they do. Aww. Just a little touch of color. And now we're going to add some scarecrows to it.
I want to make sure this is far enough away from the flag that it doesn't interfere with that. So I think this front area looks a little bare, so we're going to put this pumpkin steak in the front. So, just like that. I'm going to use some fishing line to secure everything so they don't walk off either on their own or with some help. Um, I've never had anything stolen, but I have friends who live in a more um, suburban area. And she had um, something stolen right off of her porch. So I'm going to use the fishing wire to hold the scarecrows in place better and to hold um, the decorations so that they don't walk off. So I took the fishing line around the pole and now I'm going around his neck and back around his neck. Oh goodness. Okay. Poor little thing but he's not gonna go anywhere now the wind's not gonna blow him around and hopefully um, he won't walk off with any new friends either he'll stay right here so we can enjoy him for the fall season so the pumpkins um, stem and leaves come out of those two holes so I'm gonna thread some fishing wire through those two holes to secure it and then we'll just um, reinsert that and spread those open again is to tie down this last scarecrow and try to get him to stay in place so again we're using that fishing line and we're just going to tie him down box i'm going to stencil my um, number on the outside and i want to put a little message on the inside of the lid and I'm going to stencil Rosebank Farm on the side. So this is um, a bubble stencil pattern that I've had. I'm going to use the pen to trace it. I have a fine paintbrush. And I have black for most of the stenciling and pink for what I want to accent. So it's really bright and sunny out on my mailbox. So I'm just going to be tracing um, the stencil and then painting. And then I'll just show you what it looks like when I'm done. I am inside my house right now. I need to make a stencil for the R for Rosebank to put on my mailbox. So this is my Cricut. It's an older model. Um, I'm going to use the cartridge Songbird. It's for fonts. If I turn it over, um, you can see the letter R right there. We'll have a nice scroll to it. And so I'm going to use a piece of paper that I already had um, cut something out of and we'll just make our stencil on this paper. I have my machine all set up. Um, got the cartridge loaded there and we're going to do an R at five and a half inches and so I'm just going to push cut. <laughs> And the machine moves back and forth with that bar and it'll cut out the letter R. Alright, let's unload. Okay. And that's my little letter R that I'm gonna use for a stencil. Let's head back outside. Okay, let's see how it looks. Oh, I think that's going to be a really good size there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straighten it up and trace around it with my pen. I couldn't find a pencil in my house. I don't know. So I'm going to trace around it with a pen, then I'm going to paint it, and then I'm going to clean it up with a Sharpie marker like I did um, for the inside. All right, so I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Well. I'm done for everything that I'm going to do for right now. I finished my mailbox and I've stenciled all that I'm going to stencil, I think for this year. I think um, maybe in the spring I'll come in and stencil um, some pink roses on it or some more, but for now I'm done. So I'd like to give you a little tour of my mailbox makeover. So let's turn the camera around and take a look. This is the view of my mailbox from my house as we're approaching it to get the mail. 
So you can really see the mom and the leaves and the scarecrow. It's really, really festive. And then we'll go around the front and we'll look at the kale down at the bottom. And so this is what you see from the front. You see the two kale, ornamental kale, and the yard stand of the pumpkin. And then when I open it up, inside, this is what um, the male lady sees when she opens it up. Coming around to the other side as you're approaching um, from the road to deliver the mail, we have that the other mom, the kale, and my flag is painted pink, and the other scarecrow. It's a little windy out today. And then from the back, it's I put the lantana and the geraniums, hoping they'll perk up a little bit. So overall, I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. It's just so festive and so fall, and it looks really pretty, and it just makes me happy. I hope you enjoyed this video of my mailbox makeover for fall. Please like and subscribe to Rosebank Farm and I will see you in the next video. Bye!